everybody. Welcome to Imagine Your Art. It's one of our programs that we're doing here at the library this summer. Uh, since we can't be here in person, uh, we're making do with virtual programs. And as most of you know, we usually do art programs in the summer. So here we are doing art programs. And then we do a exhibit during Art Walk. Well, since Art Walk is not happening in July this year, we still want to do some art, but we're going to do it a virtual art show. So this is one of the projects that you can enter into our virtual art show. So today, welcome to Imagine Your Art. Today's artist is Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh. He lived from 1853 to 1890. He was a young man when he was painting. Uh, he's a Dutch post-impressionist painter, and he painted well over 2,000 works in his short lifetime. And you can see these works all over. Um, not only in the museums. Uh, you might recognize this one. This is the Starry Night, probably his most famous painting. Uh, you can see it on tote bags and coffee mugs and t-shirts and posters. It's really all over the place and it is hanging in the museum. So he is well known. All kinds of, all kinds of great art. So let's take a little bit of a look at his life first before we get started with our project. I want to share one of the books we have here at the library. We do have several about Vincent Van Gogh. This one is called Van Gogh Paints the Night Sky, Vincent Can't Sleep. It was written by Barb Rosenstock and illustrated by Mary Grand Prix. And it's a little bit about his childhood. Vincent didn't like to sleep. He had what's called insomnia. So he stayed up late a lot and he would roam his town in the middle of the night, which I don't recommend you do, but he did. Uh, he also dealt with some other mental health issues in his life, but that didn't stop him from painting his dreams and imagining his story. So here we are. This is a picture of Vincent Van Gogh. That's kind of what he looked like. And he's looking at the night sky, isn't he? He did a lot of night sky pictures. So let's read a little bit. Vincent discovers that darkness is not plain black, galaxies of color. Galaxies of color float on the night air. So if you look up at the night sky, it isn't just black. There are other colors mixed in along with the stars and the moon. You can even see some planets sometimes. And there are different colors. So he asks himself some questions. Does darkness have a texture? Is it thick? Is it thin? Does it have a rhythm? Is it quick or is it slow? Is the night sky at rest or do 11 stars pulse like a beating heart? Is there movement up in that night sky? And how do you paint that? Well, Van Gogh found a way, didn't he? This is probably his most famous night sky painting, The Starry Night. Then his painting stands finished, a whirling moonlit dream reflecting the warm sun, bold and infinite like the wandering Milky Way strange and restless like Vincent himself, a sensitive boy, a hidden genius, a brilliant artist, the one who knows best the many colors of the night. So if you look at his painting, you do see a lot of colors of the night, yellows and whites and blues and greens, and there's a lot of movement in his paintings too. See how the night sky swirls and pulses like the stars, and he uses a lot of thick brush strokes to see the movement. So, very interesting artist. Let's see, he also painted self-portraits. There's a self-portrait of Vincent Van Gogh. You notice the really thick lines again, and it looks like a lot of movement in the paper, or in the painting. Um, of course, we have the night sky again. And if you look closely, you see a little town in the night sky. So he paints towns. So he has a lot of city scenes. Um, he's painted a lot of still life, so this one is called Sunflowers. It's also a very famous painting, and you also see a lot of movement in the way he paints. Even his still lifes have movement. And then we have his bedroom in one of the hospitals where he stayed. So Vincent Van Gogh painted all kinds of things. Flowers, self-portraits, still lifes, everyday objects. Artists can paint kinds of things. Uh, so what we are going to do is paint today and we 
are going to use some things that you can find at home. But if you've got your grab and go bag, they're in there also. Uh, do wear old clothes for this because some of the paint colors can stain. Um, you might want to protect your work surface too. I just have a piece of paper here, but you could use plastic bags or um, newspapers. Something to spread out because paint does get wet and it can possibly stain. We hope it doesn't, but it could. So let's get started with our grab and go bag. Um, Lorraine, if you picked one of these up at the library, you'll see all kinds of fun stuff in there. If you didn't pick one up, that's okay too. You just need flour and salt and a little bit of color, like food coloring, paper. You can paint with your fingers, you can paint with a brush, uh, lots of different ways you can make your pictures. So let's see what's in the bag. We have just little paper clip cups that you can put your paint in. A paintbrush. This is powdered paint, it's a temper paint that you can mix with water. We're gonna mix it into the paint that we're making. Artists make their own paint. They don't just go to the store to buy it. A lot of them, you know, some of them do now, but back in Van Gogh's time, they would have been making their own paint. Um, we have some salt and we have flour. And we have some instructions about how to make paint. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna make our own paint. So wear old clothes, protect your surface. You also need a mixing bowl. I have a nice big bowl, it doesn't have to be this big. I'm not making that much paint. So what we will do is put our half a cup of flour. These are already pre-measured. There's a half cup of flour in your little baggie. So dump that in your bowl. And then we need our half a cup of salt, so dump that in your bowl. Salt. We like to get messy in our art classes. And this is a cup of water, just regular water. You can use your half a cup to measure it. So half a cup flour, half a cup of salt, and half a cup of water to make paint. If you don't have a measuring cup, that's okay too. You just kind of pour a little water in at a time and stir until it comes to a thickness you want to try. So let's put our half a cup there and then we'll knock that over. So let's stir it up. It looks kind of like dough, like bread dough or cookie dough. You want to stir it up so it's smooth. Notice in Van Gogh's paintings, his paint is fairly thick. Watercolor paintings, the paint is fairly thin. So you can paint however you want to paint. I'm going to go with this medium. Just kind of not too thick, not too thin. Okay, so what we'll do next is take our cups because we want to use different colors. And I'm going to try dipping some of this paint into a cup. That works. And or you can pour it in your cup, depending on what you're mixing it in. This nice thick spoon works pretty well. So we'll just give a little bit to each cup. I've got one bowl, that's okay. You want to make another painting. So you have three cups of paint base. We're gonna add some color. It doesn't take a whole lot. There's no color. You can also use food coloring if you have food coloring at home. I'm just gonna pour a little bit at a time. If you use a little bit of color, it'll be a lighter color paint. If you use a lot of your color, it'll be a darker color paint. So whatever color you wanna use. And then if you have more cups, you can mix these colors to make even more colors. Let's see, so yellow, red, and blue, those are our basic colors. You can make all kinds of different colors with these three. I'm gonna mix them up. So, oh, stir sticks. Don't care to have stir sticks in this bag. That's okay, you should have stir sticks in yours. 
going to use the bottom of my paintbrush. And we'll just stir it all up. And it makes a nice color. It's kind of a pinky red color. All right. Let's do some yellow. Stir it up good. But it's nice paint. Looks like paint. And we'll do our blue. And stir it. See, it didn't take very much of that color to make a dark color, did it? Same thing with food coloring. If you use food coloring, it doesn't take a whole lot. So if you don't use all your paint today, save it and do it another day. You can also mix that paint with just water and that makes it more of a watercolor type of paint. But we're using this thicker paint because it is Van Gogh day. All right, so we're pretty much mixed in here. So what are you gonna paint? Well, you can fit all kinds of things using your imagination. Um, this Imagine Your Story this summer at the library. Uh, you could paint all kinds of things. Paint your favorite animal, paint your favorite person. Uh, what you see outside, what you see in your room, or use your imagination and paint something completely different, something that nobody's ever thought of before. I'm not that creative. I did draw out a picture. So think about what you might want to paint. Maybe you can use a pencil, or you can go right to your paint. I used a pencil to draw out oh, a starfish, an octopus, a fish, you know, I'd like to be at the beach today. I'm thinking beach things. Okay, so draw whatever you would like on your paper or just paint, either way. Uh, some paintings, some artists paint things completely abstract. You have no idea what it is. So it's up to you, whatever you wanna paint. So I think I'm gonna paint a red fish just because. You just paint however, whatever you would like. Looks like my paint is pink. If I added more paint to the mix, it would be a darker red. But I like pink. We'll make it pink. Uh, let's see. So we have maybe a pink fish. We could give it stripes. We could give it dots. We could decide, oh, I like pink, but maybe let's make it a little bit of an orange stripe. So I'm gonna take some yellow and mix it in with my pink because yellow and red make orange. So yellow and pink make a kind of an orange. Mix some colors. It gives it a little more variety. And how about a blue starfish? So we can paint blue starfish and I might decide well I would like a little green here so what colors make green some blue and some yellow mix those together you might get a green and how about a purple octopus? I would use red and blue. And you can make a purple octopus. So you can experiment. Experiment with your paints, mix your colors, see what you can do. Give your picture some variety. You don't have to use paintbrush either. You can also use Q-tips. Q-tips. Give it spots. You know, different ways you can use different tools. You could also use your fingers to paint. This will work with finger paint, especially if you give it more flour, make it even thicker. It makes a pretty good finger paint. So play with your colors, play with your paint. Lots of different ways you can go to use your imagination. Um, this is an example of a 
your picture could look like when it dries. This paint dries a little bit lighter than the colors that you have on your paper, but it dries with a really cool texture. It feels a little bit like salt. It has a little bit of sparkle in it, and it's nice and thick on the paper. So experiment, whatever your imagination tells you, let it dry, and then take a picture of your creation, because we would like to see it too, and email that picture to the website that's listed, or not website, email address that's listed on your paper here, and we will put it on our art show, our virtual art show in July. So all of that information is on here, or you can call us. Or yeah, call us and let us know if you have any questions or post in the comments if you have any questions. And if you'd also post in the comments, tell us what it is that you are making today. What is it that you would like to paint? What is your imagination telling you? So there you have it. Paint to mix. Use your imagination to paint. And then send us a copy of your finished product for our virtual art show. Next week, we're going to do uh, Lichtenstein for art as a pop art kind of class. Uh, we also have hmm, another um, STEM fairy tale challenge. I think it's Knights and Dragons next week, so look for that. Uh, it's all on our event calendar on our website, so you can take a look there too. So we'll see you next week. Have fun and be creative.